Yo, ladies and gentlemen, we've got T Pattern Drill. We just did a whiteboard session on mini T or three handed casting. Remember, you can go back into our YouTube channel and look at me and Roscoe doing three handed casting drill. And then you can check out our whiteboard session on mini T. It's if so facto the same exact thing. Don't sweat the name of it, just do it. This is T pattern. This is elusive. This is challenging. This is not a one week drill. This is do it till they can't do it wrong drill. Um, so let's talk about where we're at. We've got a dog through force fetch. We've got a dog forced to a pile. We've done mini T. We've taught them and or during this whole process, we're teaching them how to sit their booty down on a whistle. Now it's time to put it all together. So here's how I do it personally. A little bit different than everybody else. But again, so we're going to be me. We're going to go dog and Bob. D and B. Might stand for something else. Might be relevant. But this time it's dog and Bob. All right. We're back here. This is... Let's look at it like a baseball diamond, right? You got home plate, first base, second base, third base, okay? Home plate, pitcher's mound. Okay. Baseball diamond, everybody picturing it. Dog and Bob are back here. To complete T pattern, we start back here and we can go all the way around the horn, stopping them at the middle, at the pitcher's mound, and boom, 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 boom. They can't make a mistake. But that's not where we start. So again, if you haven't checked it out, check out our mini T whiteboard sash. Then move on to this. Now, I start right here, the pitcher's mound, and I take my mini T and make a big mini T. So I've got bumpers over here. Let's just pretend that this is a bumper or a pile of like six bumpers. Big number six, six, 18. Okay. Always, always, always more bumpers at your back pile because you always, always, always revert going to the back pile versus your over piles. Okay. So if you need to invest in bumpers, do so. This is not a one and one and one deal anymore. You got to spend a little dough to get the DOG where you need it to go. Okay. I do a big mini T. So once my, or yeah, once my mini T is complete, I will make this. Let's say 25 yards. This. 30 yards, 25 yards, okay? And this is 30 yards, give or take. I mean, this might be 30, 30, 40, 40, whatever. You want your back pile a little bit longer and you want your over piles a little bit away. If you have the over piles too narrow, when you start developing this whole drill, they're gonna wanna go to the over piles a little too often, okay? So you want them out there, you want them away. But again, let's talk about this. We're here, pitcher's mound, baby. Sit the dog down, step back maybe a few feet, tweet, right over, tweet, left back, tweet, left over, tweet, right back. Send them to the back pile, send them to the back pile from your side, send to the back pile. So here he'll sit, good, right there, back. They go to the back pile. On the way back, stop them in the center. Go get your bumper, take a right over, come on back, here he'll sit, send him straight back, stop him over here, send him to the left pile, bring him back to your heel, send him to the back pile, stop him right here, right back. And you're just playing with the whistle, you're playing with your casts, you're getting them pretty dialed in, so you're honing your go to the back pile, you're honing your casts bigger, because mini T, the bumpers are right there. If they go this way, boom, there it is, wow. This, you're 25 yards away. I have white poles, okay? We're gonna do a little symbol 
like this. White pole. Same back here. Okay, white pole. White pole. Okay, so I have white poles establishing each of my piles because just like mini T, I do not want them hunting. This is not tall grass where a bumper gets lost in it. We want it sitting right on top. They are not hunting for these bumpers. They are going to a white pole, driving hard to a white pole confidently and finding their prize for putting in effort, okay? So again, just really quick recap. Send them from your side, break, come on back, tweet, stop them at the pitcher's mound. Walk to them, take the bumper, take a few steps back, cast them. Meet them at the pitcher's mound. You can either sit them down here and cast again or bring them into heel. Send, stop, cast. Send, stop, cast. Stuff like that, okay? That's my in-between mini T and full-blown T pattern. Once your dog is crushing this, this stays the same. So I'm gonna erase this. All the math equals the same, okay? Don't sweat it. Okay. Now, here we go. It's time to take it to the next level. Here's your pitcher's mound. Technically speaking, when this is done, I'm gonna stand back here at home plate, send the dog, stop them at pitcher's mound, and cast them wherever I want. But in between, I'm taking baby steps. I'm getting there. I'm gonna start right here. That's my new X. So now I'm maybe 10 yards from the pitcher's mound. Send them, stop them. So this is about the first time I've ever stopped them en route to the back pile. This is, this is big dog stuff. You've done all the stopping coming towards me. You've heard the whistle, we've taught the whistle. This is the first time I'm gonna stop a dog leaving my side, going to a known destination that they've been forced to go to. So they're motivated to get back here. So I'm going to be up close because distance from the dog erodes control. So if I start back here and I blow the whistle at 25, 30 yards, might sit, might not. At 10 yards, you go back, tweet, dog spins around and sits. Hey, look at you. Good dog. Good dog. Over. Shoot. Go and get it. Okay. So I'll start here for two, three days and just play right here, right in this 10 yard span. Once they're doing that really well, I'm getting good consistent sitting on the whistle and I'm getting good, you know, they don't have to be perfect. They're not gonna be perfect. But once I get good consistent sitting on a whistle, back my booty up to the DMB and we're gonna go. Now, one thing I talked about in mini T whiteboard session is when I give a right over, I'm gonna send the dog to the back pile Probably going to send the dog to the back pile again. I want to default to the back pile. Okay. And I'll explain that in a second. But if I give a right over, back pile, back pile, the next stop on a whistle and cast is going to be a left back. I want them to clearly understand that this and this are different when they're learning. And maybe even for the first few days, it's stop and just do a right over. Send them, send them, stop, do a right over. Send them, send them, stop, do a right over, okay? Maybe next time it's stop, left back, or stop, left over. But I'm switching things up. I'm not being too repetitive where they start anticipating it. So here we go. Let's take these out. Okay, this is my home plate, remember that. I want, I've said it a few times now in this video, default to back pile. If you send, stop, cast, send straight back, send, stop, cast, straight back, send, stop, cast, they're going to start anticipating and right here, they're gonna slow down and be like, he's gonna blow the whistle, he's gonna blow the whistle, he's gonna blow the whistle, he didn't blow the whistle. And right here, they're gonna kick it into high gear because you didn't blow the whistle. 
So we want to not create that. They are anticipating the whistle. So I want to, again, default to the back pile. The more you dig to the back pile, the better. Okay. That creates momentum. That creates confidence. That creates a sense of understanding that go, that back means go. So always default to back pile. One, two, three, tweet. One, two, three, tweet. One, two, tweet. One tweet, okay? And you don't always want to telegraph where you're going on what you're gonna cast. So another little mini thing here to finish our discussion is let's say, here, let me clean that up. Let's, very common. You send your dog, you stop them, and they're looking over here. They're eyeballing over here. They want over here. I don't send them over there. I send them over here because if I tell, if, if they just dictate where they want, then I'm not teaching them what this means. I'm giving them the answer that they want. So I'm going to try and create these things. If they sit and are a little bit loopy looking this way to the back pile, guess which direction I'm going to give them this one. Okay. So I'm every whistle, every back command, every instant, I'm reading the dog's body language. I'm reading how quickly did they sit on the whistle. I'm reading which way they're leaning. This is a really telltale drill that is gonna take you to the next level. And it's as simple as it is, but it's imperative and the most probably difficult and nuanced and finesse and when to give an e-collar stimulation, when to yell no, when to repeat a cast that a whiteboard or me can't teach you, it's doing it. It's reading your dog, it's knowing your dog. But this is the drill that's gonna get you to running blinds. Hope you enjoyed, do me a favor, swipe up, click subscribe, hit notifications. Thanks for tuning in, appreciate you.